Okay, today, in preparation for getting all of the paint and finishing work done on the Royal Adorn, we're going to start by magnetizing our weapons options so that we can plug and play them as we see fit. This is not really a hard thing to do on, on any model, but there are some folks out there who haven't done it, don't know how, haven't seen it done. And personally, I have never magnetized this particular model. So I've been looking at it over a couple days, uh, just sort of getting the gist of it myself. And we're going to go ahead and do it. And I don't, it is not going to be that complicated, except in, I think, one or two places. Um, so let's get to it. So on Amazon, I ordered a little set and it came with, I'll put a link actually in the video description of the ones I got. Came with all the different sizes that we are going to need. And I think we've got five, four, and three millimeter magnets here. You know, standard rare earth magnets. They hold amazingly well and they will be perfect for this. And obviously, as you can see, we've got plenty, plenty. Glue you're gonna need, it's up to you, whatever you wanna use. Um, the thing is, you're gonna need a, a CA glue, a super glue, a cyanoacrylate glue. You're not gonna be able to use the standard plastic cement that you use to assemble other stuff um, because, well, it doesn't, doesn't stick to metal. I prefer to use a gel rather than a liquid because it's just a little bit easier to control. But again, that's that's all up to you. You're gonna need to have a little pin vise and some drill bits of varying sizes. Um, really, you only you only need the size that fits the magnets you're working with. You don't need a whole big set; just the ones uh, for the correct size there. And uh, little things that may help is a set of you know some tweezers. Um, a blade and maybe some toothpicks. But other than that, you don't, you know, it's just standard model building stuff. I think what we'll start with, because it basically is just like doing the Lehman Russ, is we'll start these spawn some weapons. And what we'll do is we will magnetize it so these can come out and you can switch them around. And let's see, what size should we use? I think the four millimeters will be, will be fine, so. We'll need one for inside and one for the weapon. So that's two for six magnets. Another thing that you're definitely gonna need to keep track of is the polarity of the magnets and which side goes to which. Because if you screw that up, you end up having weapons that shoot away from each other and that's no good. If you wanna add a little fine point Sharpie, you can, you can make easy marks on which goes where. These are pretty small and we've got small space to work with, especially on the guns themselves. I think three millimeter will work just fine for these. Uh, that's pretty much what I've worked with in the past on the Lehman Russ anyway, I think. So we'll go with them. They don't need a lot of magnetization to, sorry there, to stay in, just a little help. So we'll start with that. So if you want, you can kind of mark the center with the blade. They don't need to be exactly center. You just need them to be so that the position uh, on the back of the gun and in the uh, in the sponson and in the turret kind of line up so that the magnets can touch each other and you have you know connection um, because they are a little bit small you want them to be lined up as, as best as possible but they don't need to be perfect and remember the depth of the magnet you're working with if you drill all the way through this piece you might have a little bit of a problem as the magnet wants to go all the way through to the interior of the model and that's not what you want at all. Let's get a little bit of glue on a toothpick. There's our first magnet in there. Our 
Now what we'll do is we'll drop this one back in and put the mark right here. Let's us know that goes on the inside of the gun. Same process, drilling the hole. This one you want to be a bit more centered because if you're not, you could end up eating up the sides of the gun itself. Take our magnet with the dot end so we know which side needs to go in and just press it into the piece. And now you've got a stable gun. It's not going anywhere. You can move your sponson turret anywhere you want. And you can quick swap them out. And we'll just do all the rest that way. Now, if you want to make sure that these don't matter, whether you put them left or right, what you'd want to do is use that as your base, put another one on top. Uh, this time, the, the black dot goes on the outside when you're fitting it into that sponson that way you know you have the same polarity on both sides and you can put just swap a gun from either side otherwise and i've done this on my lehman russes you have to remember which gun goes on each side or you have some silly events where you try to plug a gun in and it shoots away because of the magnets so that's how we do the sponsons they're pretty quick and easy these bow mounted weapons they, they really don't need magnets they don't now you could i mean they push in and they hold if you wanted to you could easily bore out this hole you could use another three millimeter magnet that would fit in there just fine if you bored out that hole a little bit cut that post off and magnetize it right on there and then you'd be able to replace weapon for weapon whatever you wanted. I don't think you need to do that. I think that these hold pretty well, but since we're doing the whole thing, I'll go ahead and show you how we, how we would do that. So since we have this hole started pretty well, all you have to do is get the drill in there. And this can be a little challenge just to get started because you don't want to rip up plastic. But right at the top hold the drill steady and start turning and you will start to turn that into a round circumference now some people might say just take your knife in and start turning but the problem is when you do that that usually ends up in a not even circle we want to get this three millimeter magnet planted firmly in the center and since it goes straight through, there's nothing behind it, you want to make sure that magnet has as much to grab onto as possible. And an uneven hole would not be the ideal surface, you know what I mean? We'll just pre-fit this in to make sure it fits, and it does. In this case, we might even, yeah, it's just a little too small for a five, it'll fit a four in there. So you could bore out a hole for a four if you wanted to, just to really get some, some firm magnet power in there if you wanted to. Two very nicely drilled clean holes in there. We can take our magnets and just sort of insert. And all right, one went a little further back than the other, but that's no problem. We'll just sort that out and get them pushed to the same depth. In order to figure out exactly how deep we need those initial magnets to sit, what I'm going to do is drop the second magnet in there, and you'll see I've already I've cut the post off of this gun here, and I'm just going to use that to sort of push into position to where we want this gun to sit, right there in the bow, and that will tell us exactly how deep those magnets need to go. And then what I can do is just put a dab of glue on the gun. Not 
too much. Just enough to hold the magnet on because we don't want it. We don't want the glue getting stuck down, you know, in the recess there. Just sort of push it on to the magnet that's up front. Now we've got that magnet set, and what we'll do is just put a dab of glue on the inside of that hole from the interior to keep that magnet set in place. And we'll have no interference. There'll be nothing clogging that space. It'll sit dead flat and flush when we put this magnet in to hold the gun. So here everything is. Very easy to swap weapons in and out. And they just go right back to where they're gonna be. Like I said, I don't know if you need to do this with the way that these fit in, but over time, those little pegs that go in there could get worn. I mean, it depends on how often you play and how much you're gonna switch them out, but easy to do. Next, we'll look at the heavier bow weapons. So again, they do tend to hold in there okay on their own. As you swap them out, will they get looser and, and harder to stay? That's another question we have, I'm not sure. But I think that we can magnetize these with a little bit more work, but still fairly easy. The three millimeters are almost a perfect fit inside the holes that are provided there. Just a little bit of space is needed, so we can put that in pretty easily. The question is then, do we leave this little extension or cut that off and put the magnet there? And I think we probably cut off just that little tiny extension, that dot, and place the magnet right there. So we've got our three millimeter magnet fixed in place. What we're gonna do is put an additional magnet right on top and that will slip right into place on the weapon as we put it on there. And that will show us exactly where that magnet needs to sit in here for it to be flush. Inside the gun itself. So from now on, it will hold right there on its own every time. Now, the big job really is gonna to be to magnetize these, these main weapons. They're keyed to help you fit them in. And honestly, I'm not exactly sure why, I guess to help you center them uh, on the turret. But what that leaves is space on either side and either side here for us to install the magnets. And I think this is where we're gonna use our larger five millimeter magnets. And yes, they do become a tangled mess after a while if you just have them sitting there. but. A five millimeter magnet will fit nicely on either side. And while it may not fit perfectly um, in line with where they're gonna go, uh, there's room to insert a five millimeter on each side here. And there's room to insert a five millimeter here and here. And it'll make enough contact where it will hold these main weapons in pretty firmly, I'm pretty confident. So the first thing we got to do is we just got to mark an area. And again, it, it does not need to be perfect. I'm going to switch to a clean blade though, because this blade has some glue on it from just doing the various working that we were doing. So I'll grab a fresh number 11. And there are more precise ways to mark where you're going to drill. But again, we're, we're doing this in a, a quick and easy fashion just to show that it can be done very quickly. So I'm just kind of sketch a horizontal line here and a vertical line roughly where I want it and just mark right there and I'll do the same thing on this side I will get working with the drill and a five millimeter bit, which also comes out, by the way, um, to about three sixteenths. The four millimeter is five thirty seconds, and I honestly don't know what a three millimeter comes out to, but I'll put it in text 
Um, I'm going to start with the four millimeter just to start the hole off um, and then I will move on to the five millimeter actually this is three millimeter right now I'll start the hole and then I'll work progressively up slowly so we don't just trash plastic and um, really carve a big big hole so we'll just start off here sometimes when you just start with a very large hole right away um, it can kind of twist up the plastic and do a little bit of damage not saying that always happens but I've had it happen before so I'll just make some starter holes with the three millimeter that I have in there and then I'll move up to the larger bit from there Here's our five millimeter magnets installed with a drop of glue behind once again to uh, make sure we have a nice flush surface. And as you can see, our weapons, our main armament fits nicely right on top of there. Again, it really doesn't affect the fit at all. I went with four millimeter because it just fits perfectly right in the rear area of the dual battle cannons there. We'll mark some four millimeter magnets with our dots to show us which is the inside where they're going. And we will place them into the battle cannon there. Just get them started and then we'll give them a little push with the blade of a hobby knife once we get them situated. Perfect. Now, unfortunately this Hinge is a little bit loose on the turret. Ah, uh, you know, and that happens on some Lehman Russes. And what I learned to do is just really build it tight. This is the first one I did. So unfortunately, we have some cannon that like to fall. I And I can fix that. I can just in install a little strip of plastic under there. So at least the lowest they sit is kind of f flush. And not flush, but level. Um, but that works. So now we just have to install the four millimeter magnets uh, on this piece, or we might probably get a five right in there because you know the reason I want four is because they were right next to these posts, these tabs, to help fit. But I can do a a five. Um, might even be able to fit a five right in there without too much drilling because of the depression there. So let me get that in. So by just drilling out a little there, we're able to get our second magnet to sit flush. And we have a well stuck on weapon again. Unfortunately, the same, same as last time, it, you know, the weight makes it want to droop. We'll take care of that in the next video where we, where we prep and paint and get it all finished up. But at least we've got magnetized weapons options. We've got one more to go though. We've got this little guy. And magnetizing it means that you know, we've got just a quick plug and play for our rear gunner there. And this is another perfect use for our three millimeter magnets. And so what we'll do is we will cut just a little tiny bit on this pedestal mount. Sorry, it's a little blurry there. Um, just enough to put the three millimeter magnet on the bottom. We will drill just enough to fit one three millimeter magnet in that space and then that will be a perfect way to magnetize that um, that way when you have your gunner glued onto his arms it's just real easy to put in and take off and all done so it really was not that hard a process to magnetize this like you would magnetize any other vehicle in the 40k universe. Slightly different surroundings, we'll say, for some of the connections, something new to work on and work with, but not hard. For those of you who wanted to maybe switch up your armament load for different games or different points or however you like to do it, pretty easy to manage and handle with just a minimal amount of time. Now, originally I thought about maybe magnetizing these uh, track guards and uh, the track skirts, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think when I build mine, since it's gonna be more of a static model, I'm just gonna have these on. And like we would see with some modern battle tanks, I'm gonna have some of the track skirts on, some of them off, showing maybe 
somewhere removed for operational purposes or maybe even damaged or whatever like that. But uh, I imagine it can be done pretty easily as well, just figuring out the right places to, to put your magnets and, and everything. Um, these in game, uh, they don't stay very well. You can get them on there just for a minute, but you know, the slightest moving around and these things, see they're keyed. Uh, where is it? Right there. Uh, they'll sit nicely, but as soon as you start moving it around, they like to come off. But again, you can magnetize these pretty easy. I would want maybe something smaller than three millimeters to fit in those spaces. Very simple, very easy process. I don't know if this was entertaining or helpful to some people. That's great. Otherwise, at least I figured a couple things out working with this relatively new model. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you did it a little differently. And for all of you out there in YouTube land, keep building them, build them well. And I'll see you guys for the next part where we do the final detailing up, painting, weathering, and all that, and get this thing tabletop ready real soon.